Hello my fellow stampers. I am here with another Fun Fold Friday. Today I'm doing a version of what they call a Dutch Fold card and I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later. But I want to first introduce you to the Gilded Autumn suite of products. I um, love the fall, as I'm sure you've heard me say many, many times. I grew up in Montreal, and of course we would get the most awesome colors in the fall when the leaves started to change. And so this suite just speaks to my heart. I love everything to do with different colored leaves and acorns and pumpkins and everything that fall brings, the crisp, um, sunny weather. I just love that. So there's a beautiful suite of products in here. So I'm going to use um, this beautiful autumn bundle. The stamp set is here, a beautiful autumn. And what I loved most of all is that it comes with a pack of three little punches. So there's a little maple leaf here. There's a tiny little acorn, which is just adorable. And then there is an oak leaf here. So um, three beautiful elements. So you've got the coordinating stamps and it's a two times stamping where you stamp the outline and then there's the shadow piece that goes on the inside for all three of those elements. And there's a few other tiny stamps for decorating and some lovely greetings here. Um, so that's the stamp set that I'm using. And um, then I also purchased the Gilded Autumn Specialty Designer Series paper. This paper is just, everybody's been raving about it. The background color is uh, very vanilla. So if you don't have any very vanilla and you're planning to get this, I would suggest you get a pack of very vanilla. And I'll just show you the designs in here. There are the colors uh, in this paper are just, you know, they just go so well together. There's the early espresso, there's Cajun craze, and there's crumb cake and mint macaron. So one side of the papers are um, a design, like a fall design, and the other side um, are, there are lots of foils in here. So for example, there's this paper, it's got copper and gold in here, and I believe the punches do punch out these little tiny um, images, so that's kind of a cool thing. And then there's this piece, which is pretty well the same, but it's got colors on it. So if you don't want to stamp the images, you could just punch them out. And as a matter of fact, if you really don't want the stamp set, you could just get the papers and the punches and do your punching. Mind you, you don't get the greetings or any of the other images in there, but that would probably work just as well. And then there is, and then the back, I'll show you, look at these. These are, this is a foil sheet and it's this beautiful Cajun craze. It's just absolutely magnificent. I'm hoping the camera is picking that up. And this one is just a simple chevron design on the back of that sheet. So those, those, two, those two sheets. And then this stripe is gorgeous. I love the colors that I told you about go so well together. And then on this side, we've got gold and uh, copper on this side here. So this is stunning paper. And then we have kind of a muted um, crumb cake. It's got some speckles on it, which I love. That makes a really nice background paper. And then check this out. Look at that, squash and pumpkins. It's just stunning. I love it, stunning, stunning. And you could fussy cut out those little pumpkins. And then we have this um, houndstooth print and then look at this with the mint macaron on the back and the, uh, the gold or copper foiling. So just absolutely stunning papers. Now this is the one, I've already cut it up, this is the one that I'm going to use for this card. So it's got this beautiful mint macaron and gold on the back. So the papers are just gorgeous. And then I also purchased the brush metallic. I love using the foils. I use a lot of gold and copper and silver foils that we have. And then these are brushed a little bit. So I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but it's almost like there's little, excuse me, tiny stripes in here. But look at this copper is beautiful. Then there's kind of a champagne color and gold. 
Now for the card, I cut out the gold at first and then realized, oh my goodness, I should open up this pack of, of this other paper. And so this is the difference between the two golds. This is the regular gold foil and it's quite brassy. And this one is just a little bit more muted. So that's the difference between those two. And then I got the ribbon combo, the ribbon combo. I love the mint macaron ribbon. And it's called Basket Weave and Metallic Ribbon Combo Pack. So I haven't even opened these up yet. Um, this has got a really interesting pattern on it. it. It's an actual basket weave pattern. So check this ribbon out. Look, it's a basket weave. Can you see that? It's just beautiful. It's got some beautiful texture both on both sides. So that's really lovely. And it's flexible enough to tie a nice ribbon, but that'll make a nice border too on your card. And then I also, in that pack, comes this copper. We had something similar to this last year, um, but I think this is a bit different. And I just learned, I was watching another video this morning, and I just learned that you can actually curl this ribbon. It's not wire, but you can um, just take your bone folder and look, you can curl it. Isn't that cool? Look at that. I love that. I don't think we've ever had ribbon that curls before. So we've got those ribbons to play with. And then I couldn't help myself, but I also picked up the embellishments. Now these are a little heavy for a card. I don't think you'd put these on a card. But if you do any gift packaging, um, these would be great. And to be honest, I'm going to actually make a necklace and a pair of earrings. And I'm going to send them to my sister. My sister is just mad about acorns. But look at these. And they're a significant weight. So I think that will make a beautiful necklace. I might even put three on a necklace, a long chain necklace, and then make a set of earrings. Aren't they pretty? Love those. And they look, look really nice as an embellishment on a beautiful paper bag that you would make out of those papers. So that's going to be a lot of fun to play with as well. So lots of fun stuff with this set. Okay, so that's enough of my sales pitch. And while we're speaking of sales, you know, if if you're a Canadian and you don't currently have a demonstrator, I'd love you to think about me as your demonstrator. I would love to help you out with your products and any ideas and any other help that you might need in your paper crafting. Okay, so let's put this away. So down below this video, there will be a link to a, blog, a related blog post. Whenever I do a YouTube video, I always put it with a blog post so that I can give you all of the cutting and scoring measurements for the project. Okay. And then there's a link to my blog, and then there's all my contact information is there. All right. So what we're going to start with, I've cut out all of my pieces. And I'm going to make this on the fly. I haven't made this before, but it's a fairly simple um, card to put together. So let me start with the card base. So unlike most cards, you're starting with just a quarter sheet of eight and a half by 11. So this is a four and a quarter by five and a half card base. It doesn't open, it's just a single layer. And then you have this 11 inch strip of paper and we're going to actually score this in half. So I'll pull out, oops, pull out my little scoring board here. So I'm going to score this at five and a half like that. Pretty simple card because that's all the scoring that we have to do. Okay, and I'm going to fold this and just make sure that it comes nicely together. And then I always like to burnish my score line. Okay, so how this is going to come together is you're going to have your card base and you're going to be putting this piece on the bottom and then this will open 
and then you're going to have these squares. You're, we're going to create a center focal point using these squares up here. Okay, and all the measurements for the squares will be listed in my blog. I'll give you the actual inches, the measurements of the squares, but I chose to use the squares framelits because I have them. So I used uh, the three, I used the largest, these are the straight cut edges, not the scalloped edges. So I used the, starting with the largest, I went down three sizes and I cut out the squares, okay? So you have the card base color, which is Cajun Craze, followed by the gold, and you're making kind of a triangle shape on here, and then I've got this uh, mint macaron on here. And then we're going to do a greeting on the top using a circle punch. Okay, so that's kind of how the card is going to come together. We're going to put some designer series paper on here, which I've also cut. Okay, so fairly simple card to put together. So the first thing that I can do is take off this little bit of glue that's on there. I don't know where that came from. So we're going to put, this is the DSP that I'm going to put on the front here, like this. And then I'm going to put this piece on the inside of the card at the top. And then when I open this up, I'm going to put this very vanilla on the bottom here. And this is where you can do your greeting. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. So I think the first thing is I'm going to... Um, glue this on and I'm going to use Tombow so I can slide it around a little bit just because we want it to be completely even along the bottom and the sides. So let's put some Tombow on there. And we're going to line it up on here and I'm going to just pick it up and tap it down and just slide it down to the bottom just so I get it nice and even on the bottom and the sides, okay? That's all we're doing for that. Now I'm going to put a greeting on the outside of the card. I'm not going to put anything on the inside of the card. So I'm going to go ahead and put my Whisper White down here at the bottom. So I can use my snail for that. Let me just pull out my silicone mat and I'll get my snail out. This is our new stamp and seal and I'm getting along with it a lot better, or I should say it's getting along a lot better with me. I was a little frustrated at the beginning using it, but I think I figured it out finally. Okay, so let's just put this down towards the bottom. This is a very simple card to put together, and yet um, it's an interesting card for your recipient to receive. Okay, so we've got that down at the bottom, and then this one is going to go along the top. I love this paper. It's the, the uh, reverse side of the pattern I'm going to use on the front. So this is going to go on the back. Oh, actually, I think I've done this. I've done this backwards, to be honest with you. No, I haven't. I'm good. Good to go. Yeah, good to go. Yeah, don't mix up those two sizes. Okay, so this one's going to go at the top. Like that. Okay. So that's a bit of a different inside because you've got this other panel on top, but it comes together pretty nicely. And then this piece I'm going to put in here like this. Really and truly, um, Stampin' Up's DSPs, I mean, they make the project so much easier to create. When you have coordinating inks and paper and designer series paper, everything comes together so beautifully. 
before I used Stampin' Up! products, I would buy from all over the place. And I could never get anything to match. The reds weren't the same, the blues weren't the same, none of the colors were the same, and I don't know, the cards, they were okay, and I was a beginner stamper then, and didn't really bother me as much, but after a while, I just, I'd make a card, and at the end I'd look at it, and I'd go, you know, the colors are just off. So that's why I really love stamping up. Okay, so we're going to build this up pretty simple. We're just going to layer these three together on here. Um, so I'm just going to put some tape, and I may um, put a dimensional on the greeting just to pop it up a bit. So let's get this on here like this. What I love about using the squares framelits is that, you know, everything's, you know, framed up pretty nicely. Now before I glue this one, I just want to do my greeting. So I'm going to use very vanilla, very vanilla. Now I noticed in my scrap package there are some circles in here from another project, but they're too small for my greeting. I'm going to have to do a new one. So now, whenever I use photopolymer, you've got two options. You need a bit of padding when you're stamping. So we have this fantastic foam mat. This is available in our annual catalog. This is called a, it's a paper piercing mat. It was originally designed for when we used to do a lot of paper piercing. So you use this, this is our old retired tool, pokey tool, and we would do paper piercing. We had these templates that you could poke little holes in it right? Um, but I bought this one um, and didn't use it for paper piercing because it's a great stamp um, mat. So whenever you're using the photopolymer stamps, these are the clear ones, they don't have um, a foam pad underneath them, whereas our red rubber stamps have a foam padding underneath it. So it gives it a bit of sponginess, so you don't necessarily have to use this for the red rubber stamps. But when you're stamping um, with these photopolymer, I would highly suggest that you use this foam mat. The other thing you can use is our fantastic silicone mat. This is used mostly because glues, any kind of glue, whether it's a hot glue or our Tombow glue, uh, if you get Tombow glue on here, it just rubs right off, or snail. Um, none of your glues will stick to this, so it's a fantastic um, mat to you so that you don't get your other surfaces all gooey and sticky. Okay, now I'm going to pull out the Early Espresso, which is one of the colors in the paper, and I'm going to do my greeting. This is a beautiful greeting. And I'm going to be punching this out with a circle punch. My heart is grateful for you. That's beautiful. And then the punch I'm using is our two and a quarter inch circle punch. You could also use your circle frame, circle dies if you have those. I'm going to punch that out. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you how these little stamps work here. Because I'm going to add, I've already done a set, but I'm going to show you how to stamp these. So I've done a little acorn, I've done a little oak leaf, and I've done a little maple leaf. And the colors I'm using here are, this is Cajun Craze, this is Crumb Cake, this is, um, I think I used Cajun Craze again, and then this one is Crushed Curry, the orange color. Okay, so how these work, let me pull out some more um, Very Vanilla. Here we go. Okay, so you can either... So for every leaf, there is an outline and a center image, okay? 
So I typically like to stamp the outline first. So I'm going to pull out my black memento ink, although I could do it in um, the early espresso. So this is my outline image. So I'm going to stamp that. And again, you're using punches, so whenever you use a punch, you always want to stamp your image towards the bottom of the paper so that you can get this into the punch, okay? Because if you stamp, you know, too high up on a piece of paper, you won't be able to punch it out. So I always recommend going to the bottom of the paper and then punching it out, okay? And then this is our fill, so let me see. I'm going to move this over here. And so I'm going to use this crushed curry for the inside of the leaf. And you just want to hover over, get your head, you have to get your head over it. Um, hover over the leaf until you see that it's lined up. And even if it's off a little bit, that's okay. I don't worry about that. See, I didn't quite stamp that right. And I kind of like that look. It's kind of like an, I always call it Art Nouveau. See, I've done it there too. I don't know if it's called Art Nouveau. But you know how often you see images and the color is offset a little bit? Maybe we should call it an offset image. Okay, so that's one. And then I've got the oak leaf. So let's do the oak leaf. And then there is a center image, and I'm going to do Cajun craze for that. My oak leaves are falling right now, and they're really not this beautiful Cajun craze color. They're just, they're just really an ugly color. I don't even know if they have a color, but they're sort of like a brownie. So see how I'm just hovering over until I see, and I usually just line up one side because I know if I line up one side, the other side is going to be lined up. Okay, and then you have the little acorn here. This is just adorable. So there's the acorn. Now the acorn has two parts for a fill. Um, and I've put each piece on, you know, I'm running out of these little, little tiny acrylic blocks. So I've got one on here and I wanted to do the bottom of the acorn in um, Cajun craze. So there's this tiny little stamp here. Okay and then on the back I've got the top of the acorn and I'm going to do that in um, crumb cake. So it looks like a little French beret, the top of this acorn. There we go. Aren't they sweet? And then you could do these all different colors. Like I'll do another card and I'll probably use brighter yellows and reds. And even um, in Quebec, you know, the maple leaves would have green in it and red and yellow and orange, like all in one leaf. And they're just absolutely stunning. Okay, so now we're going to punch them out. Let's start with the little maple leaf. Now these will go flying. So I usually, and they line up beautifully, so I just put them in the palm of my hand. Here's the oak leaf. oak leaf and then last but not least is this adorable little acorn so sweet there we go okay because what I think I might do is let's pull this back in again now where's my circle gone let's put these away here I'm lucky it's right underneath my silicone mat. No, it's not. Okay, what happened to... Oh, here it is. Here's my circle. 
This is going to go on top of here like that. Now, this is a bit plain looking to me. So, what I could do is just stamp. I'm going to stamp a few leaves around here. So let me pull in. I don't want to get ink on my silicone mat. Let me just pull in. I always have scrap paper in this drawer next to me. Let's just pull this in and I'm going to do this in um, you know I might even just do it in mint macaron just to blend it in a bit. And I will just, um, let's see, let's do this little oak leaf. I'll just clean this like this because there's not too much ink on here. Okay. And we'll just stamp on and off. Just to make a few background images on here. And let's pull in the maple leaf. And I keep turning the stamp in different directions. So the oak, the maple leaf, and I could do a few little acorns in here too. Okay, that just gives it a little visual interest on there. And then we will, this will go on top like that. And I think I'm going to sponge around that circle just to get it to stand out a little bit. And I'm going to sponge it in, um, maybe I'll sponge it in Cajun Craze. There's my Cajun Craze. Let's just pull out my ink pad here. I've been sponging um, quite a bit lately. I was saying in one of my other videos that, um, you know, sponging comes and goes, like different techniques will come and go into the craft world. They come on trend again. Look, that just pops it out. Isn't that great? I love that. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these kind of around the edges. I'm going to, you know, put those on there. So I think the first thing I want to do is I'm going to layer this on top of this. So let me pull out my... Um, Tape runner. Okay, and I'm going to put these on dimensionals. So usually for circles, I do three dimensionals if it's a bigger circle. Now before I do that, actually, let's see where this is going to sit on the card. It's going to go on an angle. So you want to decide. Now I'm going to do some, these little bits I'm going to put like along the top here. So these acorns I think I'll put at the bottom. 
like this. Now you're only going to glue this, so if you open up the card, you're just gluing half of it down on the bottom, okay? And I'm going to use Tombow again. Anytime I want to slide, um, let's make sure I'm doing this right. I'm putting glue here. Anytime I want to slide something around, I use Tombow. So you're centering those points along the top of that card. And just try and center it as best you can. Look at that, I've got my greeting stuck on my hand here. Okay, and good, I didn't get... You could have drawn a line across here so that you knew where you are putting your glue. But I did okay there. Alright, so that's how that's going. Look at that, it's coming together beautifully, I think. Now, our little circle we're going to put on here. like so and then we're going to put these on and we could just do a tiny bit of glue or we could stick them on a dimensional uh, let me think what I want I think I'm going to do a little bit of glue so I like to use tweezers so I've got a couple of acorns I know you're not supposed to do two you know it's like flower arranging you want to have odd numbers so I should have done another set of these, but maybe I can finish the card later, but I'll just show you what I'm going to do here. So we'll put a little acorn right here. And we'll do... What is that on my glue? Those little backing pieces from the dimensionals, oh my gosh, they are all over my house. I might do that just like that. And I'd like them to overlap a tiny bit. Okay, and then let's take one of these oak leaves. Don't put too much glue. And we'll put one along the bottom here, I think. I wanted to put some of that ribbon on here. Maybe I'll just do this. I'm going to put this here for now. So I think I want to put a bit of that ribbon. Okay. So these others, I think I'll put on the inside of the card. There's an idea. Okay, where's that cool ribbon? Um, I don't think I'm going to use the green my macaron for this, but I might use this. I might, let's see about tying a little bow now that I've straightened it out. Let's see what kind of a bow it makes. I love little bows. Oh my gosh, it ties the greatest little bow. Look at that. And then I can curl, oh my gosh, I can curl the ends. <gasps> that oh that is just too cool okay I might not need them this long but I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a little bit longer so I can curl it just hold your bow really tight well that is just the best thing since sliced bread I'm telling you it's kind of a stiff ribbon, even though it ties a beautiful bow. It's a bit stiff, and that's why I think you can curl it. <gasps> Look at that. Oh my gosh, I love that, love that, love that. Okay, I'm going to get a little glue dot. Oh boy, I need to open up a new pack. And let me grab... Um, I'm just going to use my old pokey tool here. And I'm going to stick this right here and put this on like that. Oh my goodness! 
Well, I am just tickled pink about that card. What do you guys think? This is just a beautiful, beautiful set. Oh, we're not finished. We're going to put some of these on the inside. Okay, so let's put some glue on these. And put some of these. You know, if you've got these leaves, um, you know, out on your acrylic blocks, you could just go ahead and make a whole bunch of them and punch them out and put them in a little jar. You know, you're walk you could be doing that in front of the TV and then um, you'd have them ready for all of your projects. Okay, and then a little acorn. I think we'll do him over here. Okay. There's your card. I'm really pleased with that. So I hope you'll consider getting some of these products if you don't have them already and trying one of these cards. That was a very simple, fun fold to put together. I'm very, very pleased with how that turned out. Um, now another alternative is if you wanted to, instead of gluing this piece on top of the base, you could wrap it around to the back instead so that um, this would be, wouldn't have this ledge in here. You could wrap it around to the back. That's an alternative for you. I will definitely be making a couple of more cards. Look how that turned out. I'm very, very happy. So thank you once again for watching. If you want to see um, when I post another YouTube video, you can click the little alarm bell and it will notify you. And um, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my video. You can leave me a comment. I'm happy to receive comments. If you have any questions, let me know. And again, the um, link to the blog post with all of the measurements will be down below in the YouTube description. Thank you so much. Bye for now.